Hey guys, welcome back to the PC21 SebArt repair series. Uh, the wing has been completed in the previous video and uh, we've put the wing together, it's set aside now. Now it's time to move on to the fuselage. Uh, just a quick note guys, if this is your first time here or you haven't done so yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. When you do, uh, don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified when I release new videos. All right, so guys, so not entirely sure how, how we're gonna work into the fuselage yet, but uh, I know the first thing we're gonna do and I'll show you. All right, guys, well, I made a little bit of change on the main wing. Um, as, I was, as I was editing that uh, first video for the, the Sebart uh, PC21 uh, crash repair, I realized that I originally had actually put the, the struts on backwards. Now, it didn't really make a big difference. Um, other than the wheels would have been spaced, like they would have been further out towards the edge of the wing, but uh, that's really the only difference. So I was actually looking at the um, the video as I was editing and I'm like, wait a second, those are on backwards. And then I went up and looked in the manual and everything. So I am definitely humble enough to let you guys know that I made a mistake. Um, so the, the wheels have been corrected. It was a fairly simple procedure. But what I did as well is I actually rerouted the brake lines too. So previously the brake lines went kind of underneath on this side of the retracts and it just made more sense now to come along the top edge so actually um, there's a, a space in between the the two ply spacers here and um, so the line actually comes through here and then goes on this side of the retract so the line actually works better like that anyways but anyways that's the the main wing has been redone and um, not a huge, huge big deal to fix it, but anyways, it's changed, so. Okay guys, so the first thing I think that we're gonna take care of here is we're gonna get the cowl assembly off. Uh, we're gonna start working on the, uh, the fiberglass repairs that need to happen, and um, we're gonna start working into the front gear as well. So I know with the front gear, we have to make a new door for it. Um, so we'll see how that all works out, but that's kind of the step number one here that we're gonna do. Um, as we've been going through this, I have slowly been programming the, uh, the, the new radio system, so we'll have to uh, at some point chase that and uh, get everything plugged in correctly. Now the, uh, the old Futaba um, receiver that was in here doesn't line up with the, the channels that are pre-assigned in the JR stuff, so um, that'll be a little bit interesting to figure all that out, but I'm sure we can get it figured out. So uh, step number one, take the cowl off and um, we'll work on this fiberglass repair. All right guys, so front cowl has been removed. Um, so this area is all good. Uh, one thing that we have to do that I've talked about before is um, build another door, but we've also got to get the, uh, the hinges um, a spot to go into. So the old hinges are right there, you can see them. What we're gonna have to do is cut away the sheeting just where the, uh, the hinges go into place. Uh, just because we have to get the uh, the hinges out, there's no way to uh, to do it without causing a bit of damage. So we'll have to take care of that at some point, and then just put another little strip of covering along here. Um, won't be noticeable, which is which is good, but uh, kind of sucky that we have to do that. But that's uh, the way it goes. Okay, so here is the cowl. Um, the owner's done a little bit of sanding on this already, but what we have to do is uh, it's quite soft and and thin. So what we're going to do is, as a step number one, is clean this area up. Uh, we're going to fiberglass the inside of this and add some more reinforcement. Um, it's damaged around the front here as well too. And uh, basically repaint this area. So ideally the goal is to not go any further up on the black line and use that black line as our, as our termination point. But uh, that gives you an idea what we'll have to do on the, on the cowl here. Um, so not a huge big deal for the repair, but it's just going to take some some finishing work. All right, and regarding the gear here, guys. Um, so the owner told me that the uh, all the actual gear was replaced, so it was all brand new. So um, I did this on the main gear already, but uh, just a little point here. So just remember that Loctite is your friend on planes. Any metal to metal contact, you want to make sure that. Uh, Everything gets Loctited. So on the uh, landing gear, um, all the main bolts for the, the actual retract unit itself needs to be Loctited. 
and uh, anything else here. So as we, as I showed you on the main gear, uh, the pinch bolt of course needs to be done. We're going to check all this over. The gear itself is the same, but uh, the, the retract unit's new. And I did look back through my pictures, and this has been uh, put back on um, the way I originally did it, and uh, looks like everything's going to work out fine. So I'm going to go through and Loctite all those uh, all those screws. All right, guys, Loctite's been done, so that's uh, all completed. All right, guys, I'll take you through this uh, fiberglass work on this cowl. So I've put uh, 12.5 millimeters, milliliters of 30-minute uh, epoxy part A, 30-minute epoxy part B, and mix it all up. Yes, my cup is very full, I know. That's about as much as I can get in these little cups before uh, <laughs> it's too much, so. Because we still need to leave a little bit of room for the thinning material. Okay, so that's mixed up nicely. Add some rubbing alcohol to the mixture. Okay, so that's all good. Um, so I've, I've pre-cut uh, six pieces that roughly fit along the side where we'll need to work. So I've done that already, and I've also gone ahead and cleaned up the inside of the, um, the cowl. So I've just uh, used rubbing alcohol, sanded it a little bit, and cleaned it up. So we're all good there. Now basically what we're doing is we're focusing on putting the fiberglass kind of in this area. Uh, there's lots of structure already in the bottom portion here. Uh, we'll have a little bit of overlap at the front most likely. So basically step number one is we'll take our 30 minute epoxy, paint it on, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, it's a little bit thick, so I'm going to actually thin it out just a little bit more. And the reason I say that is it's uh, there's a little bit of resistance on the brush when I'm brushing it on, so um, there's no real good way to explain it otherwise, other than it's just a feel thing. And I am by no means super experienced with this stuff. There's lots of people that will probably watch this video and uh, know a lot more about this than I do. Um, I've just been working with this stuff on and off over the past 10-ish years and uh, just learned from experience, I guess. Trial and error. Okay, so first layer of epoxy is on. We'll just lay the fiberglass down, brush it into place. Now because of the size of this piece, um, we'll probably be able to use um, like a squeegee type tool. We'll see how it works out. And I'll, uh, if we do end up using it, obviously I'll show you. Okay, so that side's done. I'm going to put another layer on the other side, or I'll layer on the other side so we get a bit of crossover at the front here. And then we'll add a few more layers to it. Okay guys, and I did add some in the center there. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a piece across um, uh, the center point, but we'll, uh, we'll see. Okay, so next piece. Okay, so piece number two is on, so now we've got one on each side, and uh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to lay two across the, the flat part, or the center part, and then we'll lay another one over top of that, and that'll be all, all six of our pieces that we prepared, so. Okay, we'll put our back piece across. Okay, so we've got four pieces in there, one, two, three, four. And now we're going to lay our last two pieces uh, 
in the same spot as the first one, which overlaps all of our strands and all of our pieces. All right, guys, so that is um, everything done on the, uh, on the cowl. So we just need to let that cure and then we can start working on the outside. So we'll let that probably cure till tomorrow. For you guys, it'll seem like uh, only a millisecond, but uh, that is it. Okay guys, so what I started doing here is um, working on these doors as well too. We're gonna be jumping back and forth a little bit between the cowl and the door or doors. Um, so I just uh, basically put a ruler up here, scored the sheeting all the way down and uh, tucked my X-Acto knife underneath and uh, peeled the sheeting back. So it's a little bit messy, of course, because it was glued to the actual rib there. But uh, I think the rib is either balsa or basswood, but uh, we're just gonna save the rib and, um, and clean this up quite a bit, put a new piece of sheeting on there. Uh, probably gonna trim this back piece as well too, just so it con it's continuous all the way through and then we'll just go straight across. But that is kind of the process of what we're doing. And then what we'll do is uh, we'll have to make up another door. But uh, when we glue this, we're probably gonna leave um, the areas where the hinges are gonna go unglued so we can tuck the hinges in between the sheeting and the, um, the rib. So we'll just tack that in place lightly, and then once we're all good and the door's inserted and everything is good, then we will uh, glue the hinges and the rest of the uh, the sheeting onto the onto the rib itself. So that's kind of the process I envision for the uh, the front gear doors. Um, I'm probably going to work on one side at a time and then do the other side, but I'm also going to have to make up another one of these doors. So I'll get that done as well too. All right, guys. So I'm just making a matching door to the other one. This is the one that the owner made up and uh, just need to make a make a match. So it's pretty straightforward. I mean, we've got all the the materials here. It's not gonna be overly complicated to match it, just building it out of balsa. So um, I won't show you guys the process, but uh, we'll do a little camera fun here. So we'll go with the, uh, the new door we made in three, two, one. All right, guys, second door is made just like that. Magic. <laughs> okay, so second door is made. This is the star, or this is the one that the owner made. This is the one that I made. Um, <clears throat> they fit really well on the plane, no problems. And uh, basically what we need to do now is we need to cover them. And uh, what he gave me to use was, um, I forget what this stuff's called, trim sheet. That's what it's called. So anyways, yellow trim sheet. So we're gonna cover these in yellow trim sheet and uh, I'll show you guys when that's done. Okay guys, doors have been covered. Um, it's a fairly easy thing to do. You just cut it a little bit big and then kind of trim things around and fold it over and stick it together. So works good. Um, it's basically covered the exact same as the original. So those are done. Uh, next thing I have to do is, um, so I gotta clean this side up a little bit. And then we have to cut back this side and remove the hinges. And uh, once that's done, we will go ahead with uh, kind of repairing this area. So just gonna show you guys a little tool that I really like in my toolbox here. I don't use it very often, but when I do use it, it's uh, very, very handy. So it's one of these little model planes, um, like P-L-A-N-E, uh, as in flattening things, not flying planes. Anyways, uh, it's great for cleaning up these, these ribs. Uh, you can see all the residue left on there from when I pulled the sheeting off. Uh, this one I started to clean up and I thought I'd show you guys. So it's a super handy little tool. You're just running it across and it cleans up all the stuff and flattens it out. So handy dandy. Guys, so the sheeting's been redone. Um, the doors have been installed and they're they're not CA'd yet, but they're, they're in place. Um, I just put a little bit of covering on the back there, but uh, that's basically the doors. So it, uh, everything worked out really well with them. So what I'm gonna do now is um, put the yellow uh, trim tape on the edges here and um, then open up the doors, make sure they work properly and then I'm gonna CA the, uh, the uh, hinges in place and everything. Uh, I did add a little bit of a bevel on this edge just so it, uh, the doors open up easier and um, 
I want to make sure that the servos aren't uh, struggling too much to open them and then of course they still close and match nicely so so we're almost done here so I'll show you guys the finish product shortly or if any uh, any issues pop up okay guys coverings been uh, installed on the side here um, everything I think went really really well there's just a little seam line there and uh, looks good almost an invisible repair I like it colors a little bit off but uh, unless you're looking for it not even noticeable so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna flip the airframe over and uh, we're gonna tape these doors into place first so I've got them lined up nicely uh, where they're nice and tight in the center but there's a bit of a gap on the edge and the reason you need that gap on the edge is when they open there needs to be some clearance there otherwise your servo is just going to be jammed and you'll burn out servos so I'll tape that down and uh, then what we'll do is I'll flip it over and CA the hinges and then also we've got to CA the covering um, along the middle section here to the that rib so anyways we'll do that and uh, front door should be done Okay hey guys, doors are all done on the front. So they're hooked back up to the servos. They close nicely. And uh, I think everything works good. All right guys, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the front retract uh, reinstalled. Now we've got um, a little bit of stuff to deal with on the retract, so. Um, all of the uh, the bolts on the retract unit itself have been loctited. We still have to deal with the uh, the actual other ones on the pinch bolts or the the set screws and stuff. But uh, mainly the primary thing is the uh, the light wire which was cut, and then we've got the new gear wire. So the plug-in for the Steering servo is actually right down there, which is fine. That, that all works fine. And then we've got the two wires for the units here. So we've got the retract wire, which is this one. And then we've got the light wire, which is uh, this guy here. <clears throat> so we've got to deal with those things and uh, get them sorted out. Uh, might end up putting connectors on these guys just to make life easier if we ever have to take that retract out again um, that's probably going to be the easiest thing to do so probably going to put connectors on that but I think step number one is we'll get the retract installed we can still get connectors on once the retracts in okay guys so nose gear and everything's been done everything's in their final resting place um, I am going to put some servo connectors on all these connectors and um, one thing I probably have talked about in my other videos, um, I'm a huge fan of doing my own servo leads. Um, using power box wire is all I'll typically use. And then using the power box connectors, they work really well. And I mean, I, I trust a connector that I've put together more than a connector that a, a machine has put together, right? So, um, and I like the flexibility of being able to choose your own lines and everything. So, okay, I guess I might as well show you guys how to do these connectors um, instead of just talking about them. So, um, basically what you want to do is, there's instructions that come with the power box um, connectors, but you want to strip about uh, three millimeters of sheeting off the wire, which I've done there, okay. And then what you do is, this is going to be a little bit of a challenge, but um, so the this particular crimper has um, two different spots. So we're using this spot on the crimper, which is marked as the 24-30 gauge. Okay, so I put the connector in there, get it crimped down, squeeze down one click. Okay, so it's like this. And then what I do is put the wire in there. Hopefully I can pick this up on the camera. Okay, and then there's the actual crimp section which crimps the wire. And you just bring the actual wire to the end of that crimp section. I'll try and zoom in on this. And then you squeeze. So all the way, and it doesn't open up until you squeeze all the way. And that's the connector. So the actual crimp piece there that I'm talking about is this section right there. 
So you can see the wire is uh, right on the edge of that uh, crimp section. And then the back crimp uh, holds the actual sheeting. So that's why you only want it uh, exposed about two to three millimeters. But that's uh, basically how you how you do this. Now this uh, folded the the end over a little bit. That's because the wire is so or the the sheeting and the wire and everything is so thick. But uh, you can just bend it back and it's not a problem. And then what you do is you've got either male connectors, which this one is. So because these are going to be specific to this connector, I'm not worried about where I'm going to put them. But uh, we'll put the black on one end. Okay, and you push it in until it clicks, right? And then we'll put the red on the other end and we'll just make the match with the uh, the other end. So but um, so that's the, the male connectors. And then to make a female connector with the power box wire, all you do is you'd basically take this um, piece, you would insert it in the, the male clip, and then you take the female section, which is right here, and you've got these three ribs or three little bumps and those go towards the top of the of the male connector so i push this in push it all the way down to the end and then you've made a female connector so super easy to work with you can buy these in just um, males just females i usually buy some of each and no i'm not sponsored by powerbox or anything like that i just love these connectors they're absolutely great so anyways guys that's how you do the connectors and i'll finish all these up and show you what it looks like all right guys, just doing some testing here on the front gear just to make sure everything works good. Um, there's a shot from the inside. And here's the front gear. So I'm mainly just cycling it now just to make sure my wires are uh, gonna be set up correctly and there's no interference and things like that. So that's why I'm, uh, that's why I'm cycling it. All right guys, so all the wiring in there is done and connected. Um, obviously one of the key points with any any plane like this, but uh, in particular this one, because we've got um, the servo mounted on the strut itself. So we've got one wire coming off the servo, another pair of wires coming, or four wires coming off the light. So we wanna make sure that uh, when this retracts and moves, it doesn't uh, interfere and get caught on anything. So here's what it looks like. So that's retracted, everything's good out of the way, nothing's interfering with the leg coming out, and then extended. So we do have those wires getting tucked down against that piece of wood, and that's why I put this covering on there, so that should be fine, and uh, that's what the wiring looks like. All right guys, so that is the end of episode two of putting this uh, Sebart PC21 back together. Um, in the next episode, we are going to finish this build. So it'll be uh, over three builds after the crash repairs. Okay guys, in the next video, we have a few things to get done with this plane. Obviously we have to wrap everything up, but we are going to um, finish sanding and painting the cowl. That's kind of a big step. Uh, we're gonna uh, install the turbine, uh, get that done. We have to do radio programming as well too with the brand new JR28X for the owner and a brand new receiver system as well too. So that's gonna be a big step. Um, I think I'm gonna do a separate video on just radio programming in general with my ultra flash that I need to get done. So uh, if there's anything that you guys want me to cover or would like me to cover as far as topics go, make sure you list them in the comments below. Uh, always open to ideas. I mean, obviously these build videos are fun, but if you guys have anything technical you want covered in a video, let me know. I'll, I'll use those as ideas uh, in future videos. So. Uh, if this is your first time here, guys, and you have watched this far, you might as well hit that subscribe button down below. Don't forget to smash that like button and give the video a thumbs up. And uh, if you do hit that subscribe button, don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified when I release new videos. So thanks, guys, for tuning into this build video. Uh, check out the next one when it's released, and uh, we'll wrap up this uh, PC21 repair put back together. We'll see you in the next video.